Well, anyway, so here we are for our unbelievably second annual top 10 games of a year discussion. And God, it's been a year already. It has been not Gross. only not only in 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 order of most unbelievable to to very believable. We are still friends, still streaming, and still alive. So I'm quite upset about that. Last you know, one. life's life's little <laughs> miracles, I guess. Life's little tragedies. <laughs> Oops, lived another year. My bad. Okay, so basically, what we're gonna do is we're going to talk about our top ten games this year. We're also gonna talk about, as an addition, uh, the most disappointing game this year. <laughs> then the game of the decade, and then the most disappointing thing of the decade can be a game or console or whatever. But we'll open it up with an introduction. Uh, I'm Will. Whoa, dog! You guys know who I am. You're on my channel, so yeah, that's that. So let's go with Novell. Hi, I'm Novell, the male half of Regretful Twitcher. I uh, I exist, and I make everyone mad, including Ricky. Oh. <laughs> By the it's way, my life I think we'll go in the order that we are on screen. Okay. Which is me, Novell, Donnie, then Ricky. So that's your turn now. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Donnie. I'm a pretentious idiot. I apologize in advance. My bad. Perfect. Uh, that's me. That's um, I'm Ricky, and you know, I just, I just hate video games. <laughs> they are the it. worst. By the way, Ricky, that uh, that new profile picture is clean. Oh yeah, so, uh, Shy Sam drew it for me. Fucking during the the chance of charity stream. Clean, bruh. I like it has the serve bot. I love the serve. <laughs> I love serve bots. They are my children. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll start off with honorable mentions. Just to like say things we liked but would not put on a top ten necessarily. And okay. the only one I have is um. A, it's not really a, not really even a game really but today uh, this year I tried for the first time Roblox which Ooh. is like kind of a unity for children I guess and it's there's surprisingly really good content on there you'd actually be like fucking shocked and I don't know it it surprised me it's, it is equal parts the best and worst thing ever I've experienced this year. <coughs> and those are really the I only heard. mentions I have. Everything else is in my list. Everything else fucking uh, sucked. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that that might be the case for us. Uh, do, we didn't even think about Honorable Master. Yeah. It was a real tight list. Uh, did anything... Yeah. Well, I mean, Beat Saber didn't come out this year, but I played it a shit ton, so I'm gonna say oh, that. Oh, oh! By the way, just just top of the, the our lists are not things that came out this year. It was just the best things we played this year, basically. Okay. Oh. Um. Then the Cat Lady. Honorable mention. Yeah, the Cat Lady. Since it's not on our list, I'll say the Cat Lady. <laughs> oh man. Um. No, nah, I think I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> Novell liked absolutely nothing. Nothing. Nothing, Nothing wowed me. <laughs> that isn't on the list. Okay, what about what about that game we played, the the, the hot dog daydreamer? The, nah. No. What? The what? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fucking terrible. It was. <laughs> I loved Pong this year. That's a great game. <laughs> All right. Is it is it my turn? It, it's your turn, my good sir. All right. So I have two honorable mentions here. Uh. I think I like counted up all the games that I played this year and I think I ended up having around like 23 or 24 games that I played to completion, which is what I can I I won't put a game on this list unless I complete it pretty much. All right, fair. So I had like 23 games and like when I was making this top 10 list, I put like 17 of those 23 games down. <laughs> Oh, so no. I played a lot of really good games this year, so these were all really hard for me. 
but like I cut it down to the 12 and the two honorable mentions are definitely Baba Is You, which came out this year, which was a, a revolutionary puzzle game, I think. Like no, no puzzle games really done anything like it. And like the flexibility that the game has and the potential for different ways to solve puzzles was really refreshing. Because when I was playing through it, I solved a lot of puzzles in, in unintended ways. And that's how you know you have a really good puzzle game. Uh, the other one is Shinobi for PS2, which came out in 2002, <laughs> which I finally got around to playing this year. But um, that was a, an old Sega hack and slash kind of game, which had this really interesting mechanic where you're always losing health. And the only way to regain health is by killing enemies. And when you combo kills together, it like enemies won't die right away until every enemy is dead. And then it'll like do like a like a camera pan to each enemy and then they'll all just like slice in half. And it's like super anime. Huh. And it's really fucking dumb. Interesting. But the game the game really encourages like really fast movement. <laughs> And it, it's it's basically w what I want in a game, just a game that encourages fast play and aggressive play. And it was it was pretty shocking that this game came out so long ago, and it was it, it was so ahead of its time. So that was my other honorable mention. All right, cool. Those both sound potentially hyper dope. Because I saw you play. Um the one you just mentioned i forgot because i'm stupid shinobi yeah that one yeah it's a pretty not memorable name it Is really that new dark souls game <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah dark souls all <laughs> right so let's let's start with so those are honorable mentions now we're gonna go to most disappointing game of 2019 Ooh. and we'll get the negative stuff out of the way so, my most disappointing game of 2019 was kind of ironically the everyone's mm. game of the year, which was Sekiro. Mm. I was super excited for it. I, I, I got in to the From Games with Bloodborne. So, I went from Bloodborne to Dark Souls 3, and I loved both of them, especially Bloodborne. And... Sekiro is just not what I wanted. <laughs> it's not Souls. It's just like it's like the opposite of Bloodborne. Smash that block button, boy. Game. Oh shit, game. Uh, Bob! Thank you for the sub. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Thank you. But like, I don't know. In many ways, so like, if you take if you take like Dark Souls, Dark Souls three, and Dark Souls one, if you you basically would take the core of those games and you derive bloodborne from them and bloodborne's just like all right take out all this defensive bullshit you're gonna be a madman and just aggressively attack everything in your sight and not even give a fuck and just go 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 you are rewarded for being hyper aggressive with getting health back and all that and it felt like to me that sekiro was like the other end was like the it was like the opposite of like Bloodborne in that way, or Sekiro was. It required lots of patience and lots of like countering, and I just I just couldn't get into it. I got like halfway through uh, thing it. Thing with Sekiro too. Oh, go go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I, that's, oh, that's it's it's that it's like it le in Bloodborne and uh, any of the Souls games, honestly, any of the Soulsborne series, you have the option to play how Sekiro is played in a very defensive manner. You just have to build your character to do so. But in Sekiro, you only get to play that way. Yeah. No matter what. No it, matter how many times you play through the game, that you can't change your weapons. You have the same thing, which is really unfortunate. It, it was their attempt at more of an action game than an RPG, which also, also another thing, like there's like long dialogue scenes in Sekiro, and boy, howdy, when I play from software games, you know I'm in there for that dialogue, son. <laughs> I'm in there for that story and nothing else. And it's just like, I, I just don't care what, about what's going on. 
visually very cool, like cool set pieces. Also, a weird thing, Sekiro has like a stealth element, which is I didn't beat it but as far as I know, is like in none of its boss fights. I just I just wondered why it was there. I I don't know. Personally. It, it didn't click for me. <laughs> it just really per didn't. Personally for me, I know nothing about Sekiro besides uh one boss fight that involves a monkey. Yeah. And because of that. And the I'm boss fight's yeah, cool. there's like three of those. There's like <laughs> then you fight two and then you f I don't know, man. It it I I and it, it's sad cuz I I I wouldn't even say I don't like it. But it's it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. I wanted more and that's not what I got it. Not what I got, not got it. I'm stupid. <laughs> but I yeah. I got it better. Sekiro was my biggest disappointment. I just If you love it, go for it. But I don't know, man. Not my thing. I really hope Elden Ring is much more towards the uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne series. <laughs> Personally. All we right. all do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> all right, Novell, you're up. All right. I'm Plague gonna... Cell. Wait, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be stupid <laughs> for a second. Oh, this okay. is just of 2019, right? Not of the whole decade? <laughs> yeah, 2019. Yes. Okay, Plague Cell. Easy. Plague Cell. Um, we... You want to half I... and half this? <laughs> It's, I, I liked the concept. I liked the setting. I really like narrative-driven games. But, you know, once you're a small child piloting a pile of rats, you know, my suspension of disbelief crumbled a little bit. Yeah. In the I struggled. In the trailers for the game <laughs> and even through our playthrough, they made it yeah, seem like this is, a, th this is a, a heartbreaking yeah. tale where you're just trying to sift through whatever, the 1930s plague. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the 30s. Now they're like in like killing matters and like and, it's gonna have an impact. And it really did. No, like by I, the middle of the game, we're like, we're about to kill this motherfucker with a pebble. Yeah, and like the first time they make it seem like such a big thing, she's like, oh my god, I, I killed a person. Oh, I, I'm gonna be crippled by this for years. And then literally 10 seconds later, I'm just gonna slingshot this dude in the face again and walk off like it's nothing. Yep. And. <laughs> Even that would have been fine. I would have been just like, you know, okay, writing fell flat a little there. It's a game. I can understand. Um, but then out of nowhere, your little brother becomes Moses of the Rats, which yes. they didn't make that anywhere known. That wasn't like hinted yeah. at. There wasn't like a selling point. It was supposed to be slightly realistic, not I can literally control. Rats, I am the rats. These rats... Are your Ava? Exactly. You're gonna get in the rats. And whether you want to. Okay, or not. wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. That sounds rad as fuck. <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, it sounds great until you get one of those like really shitty twists where like you think this character is dead the whole time, but because they died off screen, it turns out nah, they're actually still alive. And, and keep in mind, the combat is something akin to. It's God of stealth. It, it's it wants to be very stealth, but then at times it's trying to feel like. <laughs> God of War 2019 or, or oh, Senua. Oof. That game <laughs> Wait, wait, which wait, which one? God of War. God of War 2019. God of okay, War 2019. Was, 2018. Oh wait, wait. Uh, no, the fuck no, it came out. Novell and Donnie have a quick question. Are you guys What's have? Up? Do you guys have separate lists or a combined list? Um, I think we're probably gonna fight it out on a few. It was combined. Yes. But we're probably gonna have to fight it out on a few of these because I, I know we had disagreements. Yeah, I'm just like, what the? F why would you put that there? What the if fuck? You, is if wrong you guys want to separate them, that's fine because I do have <laughs> I do have two separate lists for you. Oh, um, well, I can add a we spot. We were not prepared for that. I I can. Add well, you know, just spots. just play by ear. It's whatever. Yeah, we're okay, all friends cool. here. It's all fun here. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, Plague Tale at least narratively it fell flat and mm -hmm. kind of ruined the atmosphere of the mm -hmm. game because the big selling point of the game was its atmosphere. In it terms of actual control, uh, it, it plays fine. It plays as you would expect. It, mm -hmm. it just... It was just disappointing, for lack of better term. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fair. What's so, up? Uh, Donnie, yours is the same? Oh, yeah. Yup. Right. I felt very bad about having ever played it. Damn. Biting. How you say that about a game and put it on your top 10? You said disappointing. Yeah, it's the most disappointing. Oh, that's the most disappointing. That's right. 
<laughs> oh yeah, we're, disapp we're, we're on disappointment, Ricky. These are negatives. I'm I'm the, too fast. Okay. <laughs> too fast. <laughs> All right. Am I up? Okay. Up. All right, Ricky, you are up. All right. And I'm sure I, any of you I that have I have a feeling can guess it. It's it's Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah. <laughs> that game was ass. <laughs> I played every oh, single goodness. Kingdom Hearts in a row and loved every single one up even until the last one that I played Dream Drop Distance. I played these games for a year straight, keep in mind, and I loved all of them except Birth by Sleep. That game's also ass. <laughs> and and then I was so excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 and then the, the best part about it was me playing the No More Heroes theme over the intro. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my favorite part of Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I, can, I can also offer a second opinion because Kingdom Hearts 3 was my first Kingdom Hearts game and it was at best okay. It was fine. I'm so sorry that that was your first. Yeah, now imagine <laughs> waiting like a decade for okay at best. Uh, oh, good times. <laughs> But yeah, like they just kept putting mechanic like they wanted everyone wanted Kingdom Hearts 2 too because Kingdom Hearts 2 is incredible and that was like the peak of the series. And then they just gave us vomit and like <laughs> they kept throwing in features from all the other games, including ones that no one liked. <laughs> and then they added even more features and they had one interesting feature which was like how the keyblades morph, which is super cool. That I was cool. That, part. that was cool. Yeah. But then it's like completely useless on harder difficulties and you just end up mashing the Simba button the whole game. Ah, uh, bro, that fucking Simba button made bro. Fuck that game. Like, all right. So critical mode in kingdom hearts one kind of dumb. Cause that game wasn't designed for critical mode, but it's still pretty fun. Kingdom hearts two critical mode is perfect. It's the, it's the best way to play that game despite it being extremely difficult at times, but it balances the game in a way that like makes the pace a lot faster just in general, because you deal more damage, but take more damage. And then Kingdom Hearts 3, they did the exact opposite where you take more damage and deal less damage. So like your average fight lasts for like 10 to 15 minutes and it's just Eesh. not fun. So, yeah, that game was a huge disappointment. I played through it twice, too, so I know for a fact it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, because I didn't have fun either time. <laughs> like, the best, the best way I can sum up Kingdom Hearts 3 is that it's supposed to be... Kingdom Hearts, at its whole, is the best parts of, like, Disney and the best parts of Final Fantasy. Kingdom there was one Final Fantasy Kingdom character. Hearts 3 has no Final Fantasy. <laughs> And one of the no, world it has one. It's it has, got Moogle. It's got one. It's got one. <laughs> and one of the worlds it pulls from for the best of Disney is you know Pirates Three. So <laughs> you know, right. which so that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that guy say the best way. To guy say Toy Story World ballin. Oh man, Toy Story World was fucking good as hell. Anytime I played through that world, I had fun because. But then just take, I, take just the story. Just of takes it. It takes a clear nosedive after that though. Hearing hearing Woody say, "I don't understand anything you just said," and I don't so care good. was the best part <laughs> was of so that good. game. Woody didn't give a fuck. It was great. All anyone thought about Kingdom Hearts' story. <laughs> I don't uh, understand what's going on, and I don't care. Yeah, just isn't the trick with Kingdom Hearts to not think about the story? Oh, no, because no. the story's sick. Yeah, thank you. No. It just lasts no. like twelve games. Yes. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, to, to me, only having played three, I thought it was it was utter nonsense. Oh yeah, no, the the story in three is bad. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to but, be honest, it still doesn't feel real that Kingdom Hearts 3 is out. No, it, no it, it it's doesn't. weird. It's weird. It feels like, like that was the just joke to, release. Just to speak on 2019 as a whole before we get into the things we liked, 2019 was kind of a shitty year for games, like, ultimately. I disagree highly. We had so many things that came out that just everyone forgot about. There was a lot of things that came out that were bad that people were expecting to be good, but there was a lot of things that I've been waiting for for, like six plus years in general that all came out this year and they were all perfect like okay that's fair <laughs> but I anyway it's pretty good not gonna lie anyway yeah, we can move on so enough with uh with hyper bad times let's get the hyper good times we're now gonna start our top 10 games of 2019 i'm gonna start us off my number 10 is yokai watch 
Really? I played this one because everyone recommended it. And Yokai Watch is not a Pokemon clone. It is it's very better. <laughs> like a lot of a lot of it, a lot of things about it are better, except for one major thing that keeps it from being higher. Like the designs, the creature no, the designs. The designs are fine. The designs are fine. <laughs> they're they're distinct to the series, which I like. Fucking how you catch a yokai, quote unquote, is you like <laughs> feed them a, their favorite food and it gives you a chance yeah. to get them. <laughs> and it's so bad and terrible and awful. How you obtain the yokai is so fucking stupid. And it, it, it it's, yeah. it's bad. <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> but the rest of the game is really distinct. The combat in yokai watch is really good. And I really, really like it. It's fast and frenetic. It's not turn-based. You have to, like, pay attention. Like, there were times when I was streaming it where it was, like, actually a challenge to, like, pay attention to what was going on and know my guys are doing the right stuff. And I really liked it. I thought it was good. Yokai Watch, I, I, I really wanted to play 4, but apparently it was supposed to come out this year in America, but apparently it didn't or something. I don't know. Yokai Watch always has a hard time showing up over here. <laughs> you gotta feed Japan its favorite fruit, and then you only have a chance of it showing up. So, you like know. the 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 biggest thing I can say bad about it is um the catching part is stupid, and also like two thirds of the yokai are, are recolors, <laughs> which is just uh are come you sure on those guys. Just aren't Chinese. No, no, they're they're fucking recolors. <laughs> they have different <laughs> names and everything. <laughs> And it's just like, yeah, guys, we're doing this. But that aside, that aside, Yokai Watch is really cool. I I recommend it. It's a cool series. I played one and two. One. Two is a carbon fucking copy of one, but slightly different. It's kind of like you know Gen two, where it's just the same shit but different. Uh, I hear th I hear three yeah. is great, and I won't play four. So I'm excited to look more into the series. And that's mine. Nice. All right, Novell, what you got? All right, for our number, are we splitting our number ten or? Nah, I think we're gonna stick to what we have because I wasn't even sure I was gonna be here today. So okay, all <laughs> we'll right, just stick with what we got. Uh, unless I have something, <laughs> but for now, number ten for us is actually gonna be Devil May Cry Five. That's only number ten. <laughs> oh no, I knew that was Ricky, I knew Ricky is triggered. Ricky is triggered. So, I would have put it higher for sure. It, it may be. This was one that we had a little bit of a word about, I think. Uh, well, technically, it wasn't <laughs> on the list at first. Someone we, should have a bat with Novell right now, <laughs> not just a word. So, De Devil May Cry Five. It did everything, quote unquote, right. It stuck to its guns. It was wacky. It was, it was so zany. Fun. It was. Uh, no, it felt like a game. The music was good. And. You know, if you want some hot takes over here, Donnie over here actually preferred the uh, Devil May Cry reboot. Shame. Shame oh. on me. Shame. Um, <laughs> but... I like five better than that, though, so... That's good. But, um, yeah, no, it, it was honestly just a blast. And this is coming from someone who actually never played the original uh, Devil May Cry series. So, without any knowledge going into this, I had a great time. Fucking Dante has motorcycle chainsaws I wish over Dante here being was my dad over over here being I want Michael Dante Jackson. to be my dad also <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was just a great time it kept my it was interest super memorable yeah like uh, I'm not gonna forget DMC5 okay Nico though best girl also yeah Nico is pretty ever. pretty quality ever so I think that pretty much. I mean, do you have anything else you want to say about Devil May Cry Five? Um, I don't like V. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, V kind of blows. Kind of, kind of ruined like... the whole game. I just, I, I just, he's JD with tattoos, right? He has JD from Scrubs. Like, yes. <laughs> he has a future career as a doctor. I mean, in, in case this whole being a, an edge lord falls through. In, yeah. in case this whole being Virgil thing falls through. <laughs> no, fair enough. Oh, uh, spoilers! <laughs> fuck. Oh, no. oh shit! Fuck. <laughs> but his, his actual gameplay, without spoilers, um, it's just, 
<laughs> he brings it bad. I, 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 every time V it's came just around, bad. I was like, eh. But when I got to Dante, I definitely had the best time playing Dante. I remember um, you said you liked V more than Nero at first. At first, yeah. And I was very angry. <laughs> but as the time, as the game went on, I was just like, nah, I prefer Nero. I don't know who Nero is. Kind of looks like Dante. I don't know. I like him. I, th I think V's character design would have been improved with a cape. I did like, <laughs> no. I did like V having Jafar. That was good. <laughs> or whatever the bird's name. Iago? Iago. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> That's what we have to say about DMC5. Yep. All right. My number 10 uh, might be surprising that it's this low, but it's Pato Box. Really? And, uh, yeah. I, I Like I said, this was a really good year for games for me. But uh, I, I, I feel like I enjoyed Pato Box more than Baba Is You or Shinobi. But Pato Box is a little short. Which is my big problem with it. Um, for an indie game, it's really good though. For an indie Punch Out clone, it's really quality. But like even the first Punch Out that was in like arcades, I'm pretty sure had more fights than Pato Box. But I can say that the fights in Pato Box are much more diverse and dynamic than you know the older Punch Out games. Right. <laughs> But I think it's a it's it's the best that anyone that isn't Nintendo has done. And like even this rivaled Nintendo pretty well with its style and its aesthetic and everything and even its gameplay. The gameplay is like spot on. It's exactly how it should feel. But um it it just wasn't enough, I guess, compared to everything else on my list, which I got like a lot of playtime out of or just made me like want more of it but like pato box like i'm fine with what we have i'm not like clamoring for more especially since i think punch out is a better game in right. general so that's that's why i would put it that low on the list also keep in mind everybody rick was a world record holder in this game for a little bit oh yeah i i got the world record in the the arcade mode for this game where you just fight all the bosses in a row <clears throat> Dude. Good times. Okay. I think about going back to it a lot, but I have yet <laughs> reclaiming to that throne. I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying ROM hacks too much. I'm, I'm enjoying <laughs> retirement. <laughs> See ya, Bob. Oh, I didn't spell <clears throat> that. I didn't spell that right. Fuck. I'm stupid. Bye. Bye. I'm a goddamn bye, idiot. Bye. bye. All right, so number nine for me is Tetris Nine Nine, which low key I kind of forgot came out this year. I did too. It came out this year. <laughs> it came yeah, out in February. It came out during E three. I feel like I've always had it, you know. <laughs> exactly. It feels like it's been with us for so long. That's a part of our beings and soul. And like, it really I don't, it's. The it, uh, battle royale on its head. It's it's wow. one of those things where I remember when it was announced because I was streaming uh, the direct with Ricky. Oh, we were, that's right. It was just the direct. It wasn't yeah, yeah, it was the direct, and we were both like, we were we were both immediately like, "This is so dumb," and then we we're like, "Oh wait, never mind. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life." And then like you got to play it, and it's so good and so fun. It's like ludicrously addictive and it it makes me drives me insane yeah it was really good i was very surprised and happy with the game when it came out and they just like kept adding more stuff like just skins and stuff to the game which was really cool uh like that game looks very appealing like there are squads now it yeah, was it, it was right. free it was free when it came out so i'm, I'm gonna be uh the the party pooper here but uh Tetris 99, it's uh, ruined my relationship. Uh, I, it, <laughs> basically, if the Switch and Donnie are in the same room, it's like I'm single again. So, and, and it's all Tetris 99's fault. So, well, uh, maybe you should learn to win, Novell. I mean, yeah. I'm not sorry. Okay, okay, real quick, real quick. Has anyone here gotten a Tetris Royale? Yes. Not yet. I haven't. I, I got one the first day. 
I usually get like two, three. That's usually where I... It goes too fast. I'm slow. You're too slow. Come Kill on, up. step Kill it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tetris 99 is incredible. It is the best battle royale to come out this year. I will fight everybody on that. It's the only battle royale where you actually play it the whole time. <laughs> like, honestly, though. <laughs> so, yeah, Tetris 99. Real good quality. And then it's our turn again. So, our number nine, not to be confused with the McDonald's sandwich, uh, is actually going to be the McChicken. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's easily a number five. That's easily top five. Get out of here. <laughs> it's uh, it's gonna be Baba is you, actually. Hey. Kind of going off of what Ricky said, it is. It turns puzzling on its head. Uh, I, the best way I put it is Baba is you kind of falls into like. Honestly, it's a good game if you want to learn how to code because it kind of works in if and and statements, and coding can be a lot of that. But outside of the nerdy side, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I love that this game made me feel like an idiot. And not I actually didn't beat it because I just could not <laughs> figure out how to make these things work together. But has has anyone beaten it? I have. I beat it on stream. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think we got to, like, world three. And then we... We, we just couldn't our brains if you do working. all the puzzles i think like if you do all the puzzles in each world you actually only have to get to world four to beat the game or you have to finish world four to beat See, the this game this is what i mean like well i, I didn't know that <laughs> wait what yeah i didn't know either until i put the the, the puzzle pieces together and then the credits rolled <laughs> but, but but um you know it's just really innovative and it, it's a really good time and i'm probably going to finish it off stream on my own time and like I actually, a, a quick little moment that I guess solidified this game for me as a top nine. I got stuck on a puzzle that um, I actually, uh, we, we, we paid. We paid someone to solve it. <laughs> that was your decision. Us. Yes. Wait, you paid somebody? <laughs> yeah, I, I said whoever can solve this uh, will we'll, we'll buy you a game. <laughs> and we bought them tricky wow. towers. Well, my favorite part of it was, watch, was watching Novell play. That, that was my favorite part. I just love watching him suffer. That's also fun for me. But yeah, no, uh, I definitely recommend Baba is You if you want a good uh, brain teaser. It's much I better than... I also recommend Baba is You. I, I promise you, if you think it's just going to be I like haven't played grand... it. Well, you should. If you think it's going to be like your grandma's Nintendo brain age, you're wrong. You'll, you'll get a real workout. I will send you a DRM-free copy of it, Will. So if sure. you enjoy it, you can buy it at a later date. I'm sure I'll rediscover why I stopped taking programming in college, because I hate it. I do, too. <laughs> please, please help me. I'm still taking it. Somebody help me. I haven't learned my lesson at all. All right. All that right. brings us to Ricky. So my number nine is, like I said, it's I. There a lot of games came out this year that I've been waiting for for a very long time. Uh, this year, my friend Pedro finally came out after hey. I four or five years in development. It's on our list. That game, I've been following the development of that game for so long. Back when all we knew about it was a single GIF of the 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 main character riding a skateboard jumping off jumping and then kicking it into someone and that's all we knew about the game <laughs> and i was hype as fuck like i was so excited for it and like the game came out this year and i was blown away it was like everything i expected it to be like the game just was so smooth it was so responsive like everything controlled well Nothing was like, wow, this feels horrible. From start to finish, the game just felt so right. And oh, it, like, there was never a point where I was like frustrated with the controls or like anything felt cheap. The level design was incredible. The mechanics perfectly intertwined with the level design. And even like the combo system was like perfectly timed out and the levels were perfectly constructed around it. 
so that you can actually combo entire levels if you're playing the game efficiently enough, which is what I l absolutely loved. I I wasn't, of course, but the game was just like re. It was so well made. Like I totally understand why this game took the person so long to make, and why it was still a little short. But like the replayability of the game is so high that the how short it is is not a problem in the slightest. And also, it got DLC recently did it get dlc yeah because <laughs> i really really liked pedro a lot but uh yeah play that game buy that game play that game <laughs> buy that bananas game. guns and bananas blood. guns skateboards i'll do it the 90s Code are... yellow that was the name of the update <laughs> <laughs> oh how, how fucking on brand bananas how on brand bro bro you're right <laughs> <laughs> i gotta okay. play it now my number eight is Risk of Rain 2. <laughs> so I didn't play Risk of Rain Rain 1 at all. I didn't even know what that game was until like Ricky played it last year for his uh, charity stream. But uh, <laughs> I, I basically bought this, Ricky, 100% on your recommendation because it looked fun when you played it. And it's... it's fucking addictive it's really really good it looks like a game that is fun and i never played the first one but it looks like it like is trout it, it looks so much better than the first one it, it, it just, is in my in my opinion the second one is like so i'm so much more hooked on the second one like than I adding ever was on the adding first like you know a, a third dimension oh adding a third dimension adds depth who would have fucking guessed <laughs> oh, 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 literal depth oh my god fuck so uh, but I don't know. There's just, um, and it's been a, a slow trickle of content throughout the entire year. And every time there's a new update, I get really excited and I want to play it. And, uh, it's just something you could play forever, basically, and not really get bored because there's so many things to get. And it's kind of like the binding of Isaac in the sense where the things like actually mutate your character and it looks weird and <laughs> has that appeal of just like, I got all this shit on me. This is all of awesome. A you're an alien dog wearing glasses. <laughs> and like the, the only bad thing I could say about Risk of Rain is that for how like kind of simplish it looks, ooh, is it does it hurt your PC? <laughs> it runs like garbage. <laughs> it runs like shit. <laughs> Just like the first game, baby. <laughs> but that being said, that being said, if your computer can handle it, definitely go for it. It's on the Switch. It has gyro. The gyro and the gyro aiming is awesome in it. Is it on the Switch? It is on Switch. And they added, damn. It, it didn't launch with gyro, but they added they added it back. It was it was That's really sick. good. So if you got a pro controller and you got a big TV, you can play it like Splatoon. It's great. And that's the uh, the only thing. The only thing they need is they need to have like crossplay between the versions, which yeah, would probably would like that a lot. Which would take a while to get to. But I think they could do it. Listen, it's a miracle this game doesn't crash more often. Let's just be happy with what we have. <laughs> and also, you know tech and also technically it's a beta, so I don't. Yeah. Oh, but a little fun fact about the first Risk of Rain: there were ropes in that game, so you could like get up and down, like climb up and down. Uh, if you hit the teleporter and someone was on the rope, the game used to crash a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Good <laughs> shit. But nah, that, risk, a, any risk of rain game, the programming is fucking spaghetti and it's hilarious. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's fun anyway. So <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so yeah, Risk of Rain Two is awesome. I'm sure it's on Steam sale. I'm not sure if it's on PS4 or One. I'm sure it probably is on there. If it's on the Switch, I don't fucking know. Go get it. Go yeah, play it. It's twenty percent off right now on Steam. Twenty percent off. Go get it. E. All right. Novel and Donnie. Yeah. Okay. So what, one thing you might start to notice throughout our list, we have a type of gravitations to kind of, I guess, like arcadey type games that are kind of weird and sometimes Japanese-like, uh, things like Katamari Damacy. And fitting right into that category was a little indie gem, for, please, called untitled goose game oh my god so 
I'm not sure. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard about Untitled Goose Game. No, it I've n just... never heard of it. <laughs> I've, okay. so I've certainly obscure. never seen dozens obscure. of meme compilations of hey, it. Hey, yo, ain't that the game with Beaker? <laughs> <laughs> ain't that the game? <laughs> yo, they patched Beaker in yet? <laughs> <laughs> but um, Like the know, only Untitled thing Goose good about game. the Game Awards. <laughs> The, the uh, concept of it is simple. You're, I guess it's more like Goat sim Simulator from back in the day. The, the, best, a... the best way I've heard it described is like, it's like Hitman, but you're a goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be the best way to put it. Um, it's just bright, it's colorful, it's zany. You're, you just piss people off. Um, it turns you, you into do. a monster. Yes. One of, one of my favorite moments, and there was nothing that compelled Novell to do this, okay? We'd already gotten the thing where we got the kid to lose his glasses, right? But Novell's like, what if we steal his glasses again and then throw them down the well? <laughs> this game turns you into a monster. Well, you just want to embrace your inner goose. Exactly. I, I've always known gooses are, uh, or geese. <laughs> gooses. Sorry. <laughs> geese are terrifying. But now I got to be one, and I understand why they can act terrifying. It's because they are. Although... I don't feel bad dro about dropping little Timmy's glasses down the well. He's got to learn. It builds character. <laughs> Rather that be from a geese than a than a person. <laughs> um, Fair enough. You know, if 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 you have just locked this kid in a phone booth, he's oh. gonna need. We can't afford this kid's therapy. He's gonna need years of therapy. See, this is this is the fun you can have in Untitled Goose. <laughs> if, if you haven't played it, you're doing yourself a disservice. It can definitely be beaten within. A night, even if you mm. don't beat it, just as far as you get is going to put a smile on your face. And the dev team behind it is actually really sweet. The, the way the game was put together is Are basically... Are they, though? As far as I know, unless I've heard a controversy, I, I don't know. That happens pretty <laughs> often. But they were essentially just like, yo, let's make a sandbox. And I think they released the demo, and they were like, oh, we can just make this a full game. And here it is. My, my only issue with a game like Goose Game is I love it, but I don't know what more I could get from it. I, I, it's, it's very much the feeling of a one-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you, can, you could add on DLC. Maybe you could add on DLC, but after that, where do you go? You'd probably and, just say more of a, a, like a sequel to it or something like that. Except this time you're probably a cat. Yeah, that would probably work. They already have Different that, actually. <laughs> it just but, uh, w wasn't as big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Untitled Goose Game. Go check it out. It's it's a good time, and you'll honk yourself uh, to death. Hopefully. All right. So my Ricky. number eight is uh, I, I think I I don't I'm not sure why I like this game so much, but. It's probably because it's it's just more of what I've always wanted. It's uh, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Mm. And a lot of people didn't like it because it wasn't No More Heroes gameplay, I like did. traditional. I didn't particularly it like was, it. <laughs> it was just like, it was it was just a nice little top-down beat-em-up with the classic Suda style. And like, I've played a good amount of Suda games, which is probably why I liked it so much. And like it was a, it was it was, it really felt like a love letter to fans, just because ever it was like, Suda hadn't had like a studio for a while and he wasn't making any games, and then he was just like, you know, I'm gonna start my own studio, and we're just gonna make our own indie game. And I I like Travis, so I'm gonna make a new Travis game, and then he did, and it wasn't bad. It was, it was, gameplay was just kind of okay. I actually really liked it. I can see why it's not every, like, everyone's taste. But, like, the story of the game and the presentation and the music and everything was, like, spot on for No More Heroes. Which is probably why I liked it so much. And then, like, eventually the DLC got released. And the DLC was also really good. Um, it was, it was really, really good, actually. Uh, I do have, like, my fair share of complaints against it, but, like, overall, I it was a really enjoyable experience for me. Like, and... I, I wouldn't even say, like, it's a bad game. Like, I would say I'm, I'm more, like, on, like, it's okay kind of thing. But I wouldn't say it's bad. 
Like the yeah, only thing I, I would can... say about it is uh, the boss fights are phenomenal, and I yeah. kind I kind of wish that was just the whole game because the same the levels kind of put me were... kind of put me to sleep. Yeah, uh, a lot of the level like the thing with the levels is like each one had its own like kind of gimmick, and like then they they just kind of drag on for a while at at times. But yeah, the boss fights are like perfection. Like it it yeah, boss fights are perfection. Levels were just okay. Store everything else was really really good. Oh, by yeah, the way, that's Travis strikes again. MLG makes a good point. If you guys want to vote for something yourself, we have like a poll up to see the most loved audience game, and we'll reveal it at the end of the stream or when we're done with our top ten. So, links in chat. Just saying. But, uh, like if nothing else, Travis was really memorable, and I I, I yeah. dig it. I digged it. So number and then and then at the end of the game we got confirmation for no more heroes three. <laughs> By the way, that thing you wanted is to totally happening. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I have I have I have two two things on my list that are kind of cheating because they're ties. Ooh. Well, one's a tie, but also they're kind of like I'll, I'll I'll say when I get to it. So I played three RPGs this year. I played Pokemon, I played Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played Dragon Quest XI. The, the, the 11? Yeah, I think it's 11. And my number seven is a tie between Pokemon and Three Houses. Doop -doop -doop. Crickets chirp. <laughs> <laughs> so... And first, I'm going to talk about, like, Dragon Age, because for most people, I found it was, like, the the more critical darling between these three. And I just, I just, I just don't, I just didn't get it, because I, I didn't beat it, A. And I got to the point where I was putting every single character on autoplay and just kind of, like, walking through the level and letting the game play <laughs> itself. And I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not doing anything. Like, if, if we're going to go for a metaphor, which I like to do for games, which is the cake metaphor, you got That's the cake, one. then you got a bunch of frosting, which the frosting is like, you know, graphics and stuff like that, stuff, that, stuff that's like inconsequential, but nice. And fire, uh, not fire emblem, dragon quest is just nothing but frosting. It's like, it's a big mouthful of frosting and that's basically it. Characters are nice, the graphics are really nice, the monster designs are really nice, but you don't really do anything with these things. Like, the characters are all, like, you're stuck with your main team of, like, ten or so, and they're fine. Silvando is the main standout, but, like, the, the gameplay is just literally, like, NES gameplay, and I'm just, like, like I said, it, it, you can just play it yourself. And I didn't really feel a need to play it anymore. I feel as though yeah, I would the like gameplay it. of Dragon Quest is the worst part about Dragon Quest by far. Yeah, and I don't know, man. It's and it, it's weird, especially compared to these other these other two, where these two the other two are kind of criticized for not evolving their gameplay, but Dragon Quest is always like fuck it. Oh, it's so good. It's just like NES. I'm just like, is that a good thing though? And I, I think hmm. that this year has, has made me concretely not understand RPG fans. Mm -hmm. I just don't get what they want. But anyway, I would like Dragon Quest XI more as like a mini series than an actual game or something. I don't fucking know. But on, on to the games mm -hmm. I'm actually putting on my list. Uh, Three Houses was my first Fire Emblem game, and I really liked it. I thought... It um it had story and characters, but instead of just having them, it also mixed them into its gameplay really well. Like the story in Three Houses could not be done in a traditional medium if it was not a video game. Because all the things are kind of tied into the gameplay, which I always love when games do that. Cause if if the game if the story is just cutscenes and shit, then just make it a movie. I don't give a shit, but if the story is told in a unique way that is like not being that is not able to be done in a movie or book or something like that, I always give points for that and I always love it. Where Three Houses kind of loses me is that it's meant to be played like four times, four different times because it has like a branching story, 
but the first half is like really boring the second time through and feels like chores and is just not great. I didn't I didn't want to do again. <laughs> and another thing that uh, three houses and the Pokemon have in common is they're both really easy. Because like I don't know, Pokemon's are meant to be easy. Now there's really Fire Emblem, I guess. I don't know. But and then we're on the Pokemon. I got I got Shield. And this game was hugely a huge a huge big deal this year, and everyone complained about it. And yeah, like another thing these two share is that they're both really ugly. <laughs> Three houses is awful looking. It's like gray and drab and bad looking. They're both up res 3DS games with really good looking character models, and that's really about it. But I think as a whole I might appreciate Pokemon a little bit more, cause the the changes they made in Sword and Shield were like super ironically made for like hardcore Pokemon fans. Like Novell, you're like like Novell, you're like getting into competitive battling, right? You're like making teams and stuff. Yeah, well, uh, competitive loosely. Right now, I'm kind of doing. Well, them still, for fun, but, I, but I, I've never like, done that. You've never done it before. It's so accessible in Sword and Shield. It's so easy. Where mm. it took like ten fucking hours to make a single competitive Pokemon, and now takes like twenty minutes. And anyone who says that making the Pokemon, like, physically spending the time is, like, what's good about making competitive Pokemon is a fucking crazy person and needs to go into mm. a sane asylum. I swear to God. I want Pokemon to be that free roam zone, but only that. And then I'll say Pokemon's good. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Sword and Shield added a lot of really cool things. I love I love the 8th generation of Pokemon. They all, they're all really good to me. I think... All the um, new animations they did with the, uh, like, camping is all really good. I liked what they added. Like, Sword and Shield does cut a bunch of, um... Fat? Well, fat, and also it, it skips a lot of corners, but I think they focus on what was important. And I think they focus on the right things. Like, Sword and Shield definitely needs, like, at least another whole fucking year of development. But mm. for the time they were given, they focus on the right things, in my opinion. And... I just want Pokemon to be <laughs> revolutionary again. The first game was like something so like red and blue were so special when they came out. Technically not unique because Monster Hunter did it first. But right. Monster Hunter, not Monster Hunter, sorry. Um, fuck, Dragon Warrior Monsters, which is basically... Dragon Quest, but the Pokemon version of it, and it came out first. But right. that game was hard as dick. And See, then Pokemon this did this it. ties into I don't think hard RPGs exist. They just spend they just waste more of my time. <laughs> like, no, nah, Dragon Warrior Monsters is pretty I, hard. I, 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 if you if you th can think of a traditional turn based RPG that is difficult and like genuinely difficult, and not just grind here for two hours until you're ready until you're level is high enough to beat this thing, then mm -hmm. I I will absolutely play it. Please prove me wrong. I would I, love I, to be proved wrong. I think, what, I think what would make a good RPG is not so much the point of leveling and grinding, like we'll say, like, that. that I agree, that's what makes it bad. I think what would make it good is, I guess, comboing, trying to think about how one move interacts with another to kind of give you the edge. Right, well, of, this is an, enti an entirely different conversation, I guess, but, <laughs> yeah. like... Ultimately, the the thing it, the thing is for Pokemon in three houses, they both impressed me for different reasons. Pokemon has good has really good gameplay. Sword and Shield is the most fun I've had in the series. And in terms of like just like pure playing it, it like raids are super fun, and battlings are still super fun. At least fucking Pokemon, if it's easy, but at least it makes me like l use my brain a little bit to know that fire beats grass instead of just set <laughs> Silvando to auto attack and just press buttons the end. So there's that. So at least my at least I'm like registered to a degree and not like doing something else. But that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. I liked I like Pokemon. It's it's usually it's very concerning that it's so low in my list. Honestly, it's it's usually very higher. That's true. Because <laughs> you love Pokemon, so it is it, it it says a lot that it's that low. Like Pokemon, like uh, here's the thing. 
Pokemon needs like d does not need to come out each year. That would fix everything more or less. It would. Ooh. So I guess that's back to us. Yep. Um, all to you. Well. All right. So you're gonna be very surprised by our number seven pick. You're not gonna see it coming. Our number seven will be Pokemon Sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Will said a lot of what I had to. I was going to say, and I'm sorry. I'll keep it short. No, no, that's cool. Um, because you hit on everything I really want to hit on. I'll keep it short. There are valid criticisms uh with pokemon sword there are things that could be done better there are things that definitely need improvement however i found myself while playing pokemon sword the funnest time i've had while playing a pokemon game i love the fact that it's so accessible i love that you know even though it's silly i can dress up my character <laughs> um i love that i don't feel burdened to the biggest issue I had with Pokemon was HM Slaves, of course, and the fact that they they want you to p catch every Pokemon, right? They want you to fill up your Pokedex. But for me personally, I'm not one of those players who wants to catch everyone. I want to make my own special little team. And the issue with earlier games is it's a pain in the ass to even think about catching another Pokemon you see because trying to level it up just to get up to your regular team, it wastes so, so much time and it's not fun. They address that issue in Pokemon Sword. They they just improved a lot of things that I had a problem with. Um, like, uh, he, uh, here's, the, here's the other thing about Pokemon. It respects your time like no other RPG I've ever, I've ever played. Yes. Exactly. Um, and I think for Donnie... Um, I've never wanted to squash a rival more I, i've never hated a rival more in my life i i wanted to destroy hop and we did that, that would be you know? in a critique on the game that isn't technical <laughs> i i hate hop i he uh, hop's I fine whether, i don't i don't know whether to be annoyed at hop i don't know whether to be depressed because of hop because all he can ever say is my brother my brother my brother oh no my brother like he lives so much in his brother's shadow and then he's just like i'm gonna be the very best don't you worry i'll be just like my brother my brother i'm gonna he has worried. an inferiority complex novel <laughs> well you know what gary was pompous don't and... kink shame <laughs> whatever dude gary is like a nothing character gary got fleshed out and like like the anime and shit within yeah, well, he, within the context of gen one he's like character. nothing <laughs> <laughs> the thing that pushes it over the edge for me is long meowth i like long so meowth. long oh, meowth is the best that's, so that's, long that's, that's I hate. the thing that really sealed the deal for me i don't know I, just... I, I like I, I like the top i just i, I love the re, i love the regional variant. i think we just think need to stretch really... out every pokemon stretch them out we did it with now. Like, let's just keep doing it. Who cares? Yeah, just keep, make them all long. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck but it. I, I don't know. Ultimately, like I said, it feels like Sword and Shield is made for like really long time fans, and it's ironic that they're all pissed about it. Make yep. Pokemon long and thick. <laughs> thick. My last. My last comment, I hate Long Meowth, I hate Long Executor, and if you like those two, that's your opinion, but I really think you should pick different variants because they're <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Right. Sorry, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's you, Boo Boo. Right. So, uh, I'm I guess I'm very like opposite of Nintendo in this list this year because uh, my number seven is 3D Dot Game Hero, which came out in 2009, and I finally played this year. This game is like a, a the 2D Zelda game I've been waiting for since like Minish Cap, and it was so good. Like, I was blown away by the quality of this game and how, like, it's very similar to the first Zelda game where they just kind of drop you in this world and they're like, all right, good luck, asshole. Take in mind, this is a From Software game. You know, the people who made, Sol or no, sorry, it's an Atlas game who made Demon Souls. The Dank and Souls? Those people went on to make all the other Souls games. But yeah. This was an Atlas game, so this was made by the people who made Demon Souls. And uh, there's a lot of that in the game still, in terms of like the atmosphere and spots. But the game is beautiful. 
despite being voxel art. And like, it was really ahead of its time. Like if this game came out in like modern day, I think it would do really well. But it came out like uh, PS3. Yeah, PS3 era. <laughs> you know, bro shooter, bad, cute things, bad. It came out during that era of games. It, it came so out like during that cool. area and only on the PS3. Yeah, which so it love or hate. Totally it was, was not the winner. Over. Was not the winner of that one. Mm -hmm. So this game was really a this game is a a gem for sure. It's it's just sad that it got so forgotten because it has all the heart and like spirit of a Zelda game, and it just like escalates it even more it's it's crazy like i was i was really surprised and then they have this whole like dumb sword building mechanic where you can like <laughs> upgrade your swords and make them way too long and like go through walls and it's just broken as fuck it was a really good experience and like there's even multiple endings if you like don't do things correctly it's, it's just good it was just a really good solid zelda clone and I'm sad that no one played it. Then and no one knows will. what it is. <laughs> Except PS3 emulation is coming along pretty well. So it is. Maybe people will play this game. Nah, I'm going to just play JoJo. I doubt <laughs> it. <laughs> Who knows? All right. So my number six is Astral Chain. Really? All right, so Astral Chain is the, you know, is what, to most people, it's just not Bayonetta 3, because everyone's just like, where the fuck is Bayonetta 3 it's Platinum? It's probably going to be better. Pro it's probably better than Bayonetta. Uh, so I have not played many stylish action games. I played Bayonetta. I've dipped my, my, my baby toes into Devil May Cry. Um, but Astral Chain feels super unique. And I'm not sure if it's, like, necessarily in a good way. Because, like, the learning curve for this game is fucking huge and really awkward. Because, like, you have to, like, control this other thing with the, the, the other stick and it's bad and terrible at first. But once you, like, get going, you do all this insane shit and it's really cool. <laughs> and it's... A super anime in the best way. It has lots of like cool moments that I don't know. I've just never really played anything like it, and it's really unique. And that for me is kind of enough to rank super high. It's really clean, it looks really great, it runs really smooth, and it's on a Switch. And like, I don't know. It like it felt like a game from like the uh game like the late GameCube early like 360ish era just coming out now and I don't know it it was focused on the gameplay first and I really appreciated that and also it has like just dope as fuck moments and it was never not fun except for the, the hugest fuck learning curve and I really recommend it to anyone who likes really gamey games where you just do shit and combo and swing a giant monster made of big hands at people <laughs> and then you go into the monster with big hands and then you jojo punch everybody it's great Order. it's it's super fucking fun like it i i think like in terms of just like i'm having a good time <laughs> is like one of yeah, the best and, ones and kamiya games are always like that uh i remember the the director of ninja gaiden talked about this a bit but um, any game that Hideki Kamiya makes uh, always does style over substance. And, like, that's fine. There's a place for that, you know? Like, style is totally okay. But, like, when you, like, look at the games more technically gameplay-wise, they're, like, pretty simple. But they look cool, and they make you feel cool. And that's kind of the point of video games a lot of the time. So that's fine. I would say like, it, it is still a, a kind of a style over substance, but like the style and the gimmick it has of like controlling two characters is like one that feels really unique and not just yeah by the numbers. And it and it's nice that it is something different finally because you know every game that he's done since Bayonetta one, besides Wonderful One Hundred One, has been Bayonetta, but reskinned. 
See, actually, it reminds me the most of Wonderful 101. That's good. That's very good. Because the thing about his about Platinum in general, when they make something that isn't a character action game, it's always really, really good. It's always like really unique and it takes a spin off of like whatever genre it does. Like Wonderful 101 and Okami, which, you know, that's Clover, but that, that you, uh, Platinum, same thing. Okami and, coming like, back though. Beautiful Joe and like all of those games were like not character, they were not Devil May Cry, so they were really cool. And then Bayonetta came out and it's like, oh, this is just kind of like Devil May Cry. And then Bayonetta 2 came out, and it's like, oh, that's just Devil May Cry again. And then, like, that Ninja Turtles game came out, and everyone's like, oh, <laughs> it's just Devil May Cry again. And that Transformers game came out, which and, is Yeah, dope. and everyone was like, oh. And then Devil Astral Ninja Chain Rising. came out, and they're like, wait, it's not Devil May Cry? <laughs> what about Metal Gear Rising, though? Metal Gear Rising is is the the epitome of style over substance. That game's it's, really simple. I love that it, game. It's, Don't it's get the, me wrong. It's the dumbest shit on the planet Earth, but it's it's so good. <laughs> but the gameplay of that game is hit attack, and then when they attack at you, you press forward at them. And that's the whole game. <laughs> but you got that bump in soundtrack, so it don't matter. Exactly. The, the, like that. It, if that game didn't have the soundtrack, it did. It'd be like a two out of ten game. No one, no one yeah. would give a shit. No one would have given a shit. <laughs> True facts. Soundtracks are important. But yeah. Astral Chain was very refreshing to see. All right. What you got, Nani? All right. Well, our number six is going to be a game that is named Pizza Game. I want you to close your eyes and imagine a visual novel where you have bright and colorful characters, a charming story, and everything is spelled wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a feature. <laughs> that is not a mistake. <laughs> there are so many grammatical errors and you literally have to read it just like that there's there's also voice acting in the game so what pizza game is it's a visual novel about a girl named cayenne yes cayenne like the pepper yes like the pepper um and sh her goal is to uh get the best boyfriend Be um she she wants she, she wants she, she wants to get with the uh the ceo of a really, really big company who also happens to be a serial killer. Yes. And he can rap really good. He can. And no one believes, well, everyone knows he's a serial killer. Yeah, except but for he's Kyan. rich, so you have to accept it. Yep. And there, <laughs> there are different... Thus is life. <laughs> <laughs> there are different uh, characters as well. Like you have the coffee shop guy who is uh, also a uh, person he's a with... Demon. A, yeah, he's a demon he's a with demon. a dark secret past. Yeah. Um, a trash man guy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there's like your inner self, inner Cayenne, and yeah, yeah. She, she just belittles you. It's great. If It's hard to explain. Streaming it was so fun. Yes. It was so fun to stream. You will never appreciate the <laughs> English language more after you play a pizza game. It, it It's a barrel of laughs. I yeah. think it gives you brain damage. It does. I, 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 I like. I couldn't speak correctly. Oh, that explains spell. a lot for Novell. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a month after. And just like got him it's, it's so good so uh i would definitely recommend just looking at the trailer um yep. just, that that sells it to you if you want to know what pizza mm -hmm. game is that that's exactly what it is uh with its heart on its sleeve uh it was a great experience and i love it that's it yeah, yeah no, hey. I'm, I'm with you all right so we're on six right yeah six my number six uh, was a game I, I guess I technically haven't finished, which is, you know, I'm breaking a pretty big rule of mine on this one. But this this game is something special. It's Noida, which came out uh, a few months ago. A Moida most foul. Uh, so Noida, if you if you ever I'm, I'm, I'm probably dating myself a little bit on this one. But um, if you guys ever played those flash games where it's like sand the sand flash games and like mm -hmm. the the sand has different properties and you just like oh yeah put it in a box and they interact with each other yes i've played those all right so those imagine are that but now make entire environments procedurally generated out of said sand and now you're a wizard and you have a you have a whole bunch of spells and wands that you can customize 
and now put monsters in in that environment and now you're traversing it i watch i just want to say every ga- every great game is punctured by and then you're a wizard <laughs> i was going to say well i'm sold I'm, I'm sold. yeah no this game is like insane just the physics of it all like honestly the gameplay could be totally different and it would probably still be a really good game just due to the the physics and chemistry system that's going on behind the scenes because it, it's a pixel art game but every single pixel has its own physics it, it has like its own density its own weight its own chemistry properties like every every piece of environment is really detailed in all of its properties and like you can interact with every part of the environment in some way more often than not and it feels it it feels really similar to like spelunky in the way that you don't ever really know how the game is going to act at any given time except this game feels a lot more like if the controls feel a little more tight it feels the it controls like terraria if you guys have played that and uh it, yeah, it's just like playing Terraria and you're only using spells in that game. So well, that's why I'm not going to like it. Is like, but, uh, it's, wait, wait, it's so one question. It's, yeah. it's like Terraria. Can you see things? <laughs> Sometimes. Is the HUD not terrible? <laughs> the HUD is similar. Because ter- have- to Terraria's, Terraria's HUD is the only reason I don't like that game. You it's have your items in the top left corner, terrible. and that's really... And then your health in the top left corner also, and that's pretty uh, much all the HUD there is. Okay. Fair. Like, it's a super bare-bones HUD, because there's not that much mechanics for your own character in no, the game. I, I, I like minimalist HUDs. I'm down for that. Yeah. I just want to be able to see shit. It's a totally readable HUD, though. It's like, because Terraria's is kind of weird where it has the hearts and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not that. It's all it's all bars. Now, Terraria's the one where you open your inventory and it takes up your entire fucking screen. And you're like, I, okay, I, I so don't. Yeah, there's very little to no inventory management in, in Noida, because you can only hold eight things at any given time. All right, and that's word. four wands and four items. So I it's feel, like I, I very, would like that more. <laughs> yeah, it's a very simple game in terms of your own mechanics, but in terms of the world's mechanics, it's so complicated that they need to crash the game every time you want to restart a run because there's so many memory leaks in the programming that if they did not crash the game, it would crash your computer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious, but annoying. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Very good game. I've, I've seen. A li- I've seen a little bit. Four. I've seen a little bit of you playing it. It does look really interesting. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend it if you like roguelites, especially. Oof, so many roguelikes. So number five, now to the top five, is a critical darling of last year that I only got around to this year is Celeste. Ooh. So uh, I played Celeste, and yeah, pretty much everything anyone said about it about it being great and awesome is 100% correct. <laughs> it's really fun. It's a really fun platformer. <laughs> it has, it has like, um, and once again, it does a thing where it has a story and the story kind of builds on the gameplay. It's not something that would work in a traditional narrative. And I always love that. And I always appreciate that. And it's, the gameplay is fast. It's fun. It's tight. The core Story is a good challenge, but it has if you want to if you want to go balls to the walls, it is ready to go balls to the walls with you. And the mechanics are simple: jump, a jump, and a wall wall grab and a dash, and that's it. Eventually, you get like a little bit more than that, but it kind of ties into the whole story thing. And it it's just really good. It reminds me of like. It's like Super Meat Boy, where, like, what Meat Boy is is so simple, but it just fucking nails what it is so hard that it's just, like, it's it's so great. <laughs> Celeste is a simple platformer, and it ju- does that so well, so tightly, and it's just so good. <laughs> I had a fucking blast playing it, and it was it was fun to, like... It, it's the fun kind of challenging, where you're just like, I'm so close, I can keep going, I swear. Just keep going to it. 
It it is great. One of the best platformers I've played like this decade, probably. Super recommend it. And yeah, that's my number five. Alrighty. So my number five is actually going to be a RPG platformer. The name of the game is called Indivisible. Um the way it works so first off it's beautiful to look at uh the style of the game is i guess you want to call it hand drawn it is hand drawn uh, there's no other way to yeah it's like the hand drawn anime kind of style yeah uh, it's very much in the vein of the shantae games specifically uh the latest one and halfway hero bro um, it's just skull girls <laughs> okay, it's also just skull <laughs> just say skull girls that's all it is <laughs> it's skull girls but um, an rpg yes uh, the combat is fairly simple. Um, the way it works, it, it's, well, it's a fighting game. <laughs> like Ricky, it's Skullgirls. Um, you, it's a good balance between platformer and RPG is what it is. Um, the platforming is tight. Uh, wall jumping isn't a pain, which is something a few games struggle with. And the actual RPG mechanics, they're fairly interesting. Uh, you do have a leveling system. The way you do combat is actually... <sighs> Would you call it kind of quick time events, but also not uh, like I would Paper I Mario ish? I would say it's like like I don't know. It's it's kind of like a fighting game. It's like a very very simple fighting game. Yeah, you have four characters at least at any given time. I actually haven't beat it myself yet, but um, essentially each character is designated to a button, and with your limited amount of action points, you can do combos with them you can have character a attack three times followed up by character b and maybe character c will just stay in the back and heal or something it, it, there's a lot of characters in the game and you can choose your play style how you want you can be overly defensive you can play in the back you can be aggressive um honestly it's just charming that's the best way i can put it it's pleasant to look at the story is it's not going to be the best thing you've ever heard before Classic. also ajna's voice or her accent doesn't make any sense because no one else in the world has her accent including her father <laughs> <laughs> there was one other person with a similar ac accent to Anja, actually. all right but why does she have that accent well okay Did no you one in her village had that accent. she just said sound foreign <laughs> <laughs> well, well, technically... What's your accent? Um, Generally Eastern Bloc. Spoiler warning in 10, 9, 8. Okay, good enough. Uh, but technically she's not from there. I mean, I guess if you're... Okay, but she grew up there. I mean, fair point. Her dad raised her. I know, I, I already got that spoiler, but yeah, <laughs> no. no. she The dad raised her. Like, she shouldn't have that accent. She's the main character, so You don't she's just special. get this accent. <laughs> Because you came from something. <laughs> I, I will say, though, um, I, I haven't finished it yet. But uh, fair warning, I'm not going to tell you why. There's a character named Zebe. I hate him. Uh, when a certain thing happens, you'll know when. Just don't put him back in your party. I refuse to use him at <laughs> any point in the game. I don't know now. anything about the game. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. But, um, oh, yeah, no, I don't like him. Yeah. Zebe, you mean? Yeah. That's Yo, but what about fucking uh, Tungar? I haven't gotten to Toongar yet. Bro, Toongar's Toongar. at the very beginning! You missed him forever! Who's Toongar? He's the he's the he's the guy with the sword that's a whip. Oh yeah, no, I, I did not see him. Oh. I, like, I, like, I like the chick with the deflated tiger. Yes, Rosmi. Yeah, I like her too. She's my wife. But um <laughs> Indivisible is it, it's very pleasant if you're I guess into platformers and fighting games. I give it a check out. I think uh, you could have fun with it, Will. You might get bored. But... Uh, like, like from watch having watched you and a few people stream it, I think the only thing that's kind of keeping me from playing it is it seems to be a little too of the anime I don't like, which is like the really? embarrassing kind. And th th mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna need to know what your embarrassing anime. <laughs> it's, it's it's a little it's a little too much on the. Uh, do I want to see be seen playing this? Yes. I, I, it's I, got titties, dude. I asked myself, <laughs> and like I don't know, some of the voices I found extremely grating. But the whatever. Need, this is Tungar. 
Noville. You missed the best character in the game, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did not get them. Nah, yeah, I, I, you I'll, suck. I'll check it out if I, get, if, I, if I got time. The Ronnie needs to stop hitting on Anja, though. That's Two Moe? I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Oh, also, now that we're talking about anime, yeah, I want to do a, a quick thing I forgot to mention about uh, Fire Emblem. Mm -hmm. I think I hate medieval anime because it, it takes I away. I think I hate new Fire Emblem. It, 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 it takes away so much. Of, it, 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 medieval anime is so fucking terrible because the reason you like medieval shit because it's like real and visceral and you put anime in there and it throws all that shit out of the gate. People doing no, backflips and shit. And I was like, uh, I'm out. I'm out. I'm good. Bye. I, I loved it when they uh, remade Game of Thrones in an anime format. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It, the, 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 two, the two mediums clash too much for me, but <laughs> that's just a quick side note there. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> All right, is it, is it back to me? Yeah, it's Ricky. All right. So What's number, number five, five, mate? Uh, uh, whatchamacallit, Monster Hunter world iceborne counted as a new game this year i counted this as a new game this year it's west of loathing reckoning at gun manor that was a whole lot of words yeah but uh i'm just gonna write the, west of loathing so, dlc <laughs> yeah the west of loathing dlc was like i i, I already went over this game last year because this was really high on my list last year i think i might have put it at number one even but uh um, yeah it was you you really liked west of loathing oh it's so fucking good like this I, i've explained so many times that, like when i play this game like this game is just like the embodiment of me but put into a game like it's exactly my humor and like my desired art style for a comedy game and it's just <laughs> me but injected into a video game and it makes me so happy and the dlc was all about a haunted mansion and and there's just a lot of really bad puns and a lot of really bad jokes constantly about ghosts and it, it was it was such an enjoyable experience and i loved i loved every second of it again i'm just sad it wasn't longer but it was just a dlc so you know oh well but yeah uh it's a you know an incredible story driven rpg play west of loathing it's really cheap right now i'm pretty sure even on switch it's on sale on switch right now i know that go buy west of loathing <laughs> nah, like, like, if, if, i think i have the the 2018 thing saved somewhere but ricky talks for like 20 minutes about west of loathing oh, i talked about i talked about west of loathing so much last year it's I really love this it's game. really good it's just cowboys and cowboys and and jokes for like 20 hours straight <laughs> okay we're moving on to number four so uh much like pokemon this one's kind of like, like a winner of a genre for of the genre for me so this year i played three metroid style games cool. one of them was metroid 4 uh fusion one of them was hollow knight and one of them was ori in the blind forest and my favorite of those three by like a surprising degree, like significant, is Ori in the Blind Forest. Ori is so f fucking good. <laughs> it's like everything I want from a Metroid a Metroid game. Like so, if you, t if you so how I would describe them, if you have like Me Metroid, you know, Fusion, it's the older one. It's like the it's like the base of the other two. Metroid is like equal parts kind of like combat and exploration. And the other two games are like they both double down on the other. So Hollow Knight doubled, doubles down on combat. Hollow Knight is essentially Metroid plus Dark Souls. And it does work. It is really good. But I found it less appealing as a whole. Mostly because it, it became... When you lose a fight, and it is, it's it's hard because it's, it's combat based, so it's difficult. When you lose a fight, and you have to like go all the way fucking back, you go all the way back to where you found, and it's just a fucking chore. And save points are not as plentiful as they should be, and it doesn't even like it has certain things that are unlockable that I don't think should be unlocks. Like 
showing where your character is on your fucking map is something you have to buy. Granted, you get it very early on, but you still have to buy it. And then that made no fucking sense to me. Um, Metroid 4 is really good, but I don't know, man. Ori just... Du- so Ori doubles down on exploration and platforming. Like, and it does them so well. And Ori's movement is so fluid and so beautiful. It doesn't have much in the way of combat. A lot of combat is like you tap like the, the attack button and that sends like kind of a auto homing attack. But the platforming is built into the combat. So it's all you're entirely focused on how you move around enemies and bosses. And you do crazy shit like wall run and go into attacking bullets and deflect them back at you. And you backflip off of them and deflect them. And they all build off each other so well. Ori is fucking beautiful. It has a gorgeous art style. And it just it flows in such a way that I've never seen from a Metroid style game. And I think it, it's because it 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 fo- it doubles down on platforming. It also eliminates a lot of frustration because in Ori you have like a magic meter. And you can spend your magic meter to like make a save point for yourself. There are no save points in Ori. Or, like, there are very few. So if you're about to go to a hard boss or a hard, like, platforming section, you can just... I'm going to save here. So when I die, I just come back here. And it felt like such a wonderful modernization of the Metroid formula. Where Hollow Knight did not, I guess. And, you know, Metroid is Metroid. It, it, it is the formula. So, yeah. I would say, yeah. Hollow Knight's my number four. Not... not Ori's my number four. <laughs> Ori is fucking great. It is... We know what you really like. <laughs> we know what you really like. <laughs> we know you lied, Slip. Will. Uh, Ori is the best Metroid game in, like, forever. I can't wait for the sequel. It's so good. Please go play it. <laughs> it's on Switch. <laughs> Please. I do agree that people talk up Hollow Knight a lot more than it needs to be. But oh, I think Hollow Knight's good. Hollow Knight's good. It's a very entry-level... Um, metroid clone hollow knight's good but i just feels like it focuses so much on combat that a lot of the other points are kind of lacking yeah we get it we get it tim burton 2d dark souls okay cool (laughs) Alrighty. well for our number four let me just ask you a question uh who thinks pixel art is dead me will Okay, good, because you're wrong. Get the fuck out of here. Is River City Girls? Oh, no. Yes. I'm, like, actually River upset this is so girls. high on your list. Uh, how could I not? It's so fun. Exactly. It I hate, to be there for the soundtrack. Alone. I hate soundtrack, everything about this. The, the pixel art is beautiful. It flows wonderfully. I don't remember her name. Ka, I don't remember her name. Anyway, you have a girl who is a redhead, and she dabs as an attack which is wonderful. That that just alone should give it number one, but I have mm. to hold myself back. Novell, you're um, hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it, com- River City Girls is, of course, based on River City. Uh, you're just two girls trying to get their boyfriends back. Remember the and- NES? Don't you remember? <laughs> remember the oh, good know, times? It was fun. <laughs> it was fun, okay? Um, it, it's, a, it's a game that's face value. It, it is what it is. You get what you thought you were going to get. But just the way that it was executed it was, was so beautifully done. Uh, they put a lot of care into the details. I, I felt the love for it. I liked all of the bosses. Yeah. Um, we thought there was a Full Metal Alchemist reference in there at one point. Uh, I stand by it. But, you yeah, know, River City Girls, beautiful to look at. Great time, especially if you're co-oping. And uh, the one who can dab is the best girl in any video game. She's the best video game girl. Love her so much, I can't remember her name. Yeah, my number four is the River City Girl soundtrack. You can just skip the game <laughs> and just listen to the soundtrack. Um, you know, I had this thought the other day about pixel graphics. And I, I want to share it because uh, it, I think it's appropriate and relevant here. Uh, <laughs> I think indie games using pixel graphics... Is like whenever a student, whenever an art, a, a film student wants to use black and white for their project, it's the exact <laughs> same thing. It's like you do it, and it's just like, okay, I, whatever, get the fuck out of here. 
I'm tired of I it. I think it's because we get pixel it. art is easier to pull off My... with, with a much smaller budget and a smaller scale in, in general. I mean, when I think of indie games trying to go, you know, full on three dimensional, it doesn't usually look great. My only complaint. But pixel art has the potential to look great with the very small resources that they might have. And my quick only complaint in regards to pixel art is, I guess for me, I like pixel art that is detailed. So, you know, Scott Pilgrim, Mercenary Kings, that type of pixel art. I absolutely hate pixel art that is... Uh, the leg is one pixel. Yeah, the leg is one pixel. And the it's just like three pixels wide for the body. I hate that type of pixel art game, which there's been an abundance of in 2018 and 2019. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> Also, what about Celeste? Celeste is pixel art. Actually, that's like the one thing I didn't really like about it, but it has, actually has lots of really good hand hand drawn art in it too. That's why that's the only reason it's not like number one or two is because of the fucking pixel art. And I'm sick of it. That's fair. <laughs> you know, what didn't have pixel, pixel art. art Ori, Ori didn't have pixel art. It looked fucking great. It probably also had a budget, but whatever. Ori definitely had a budget. <laughs> Hell and I didn't. It, it looked really good. It was hand drawn. I, I would say the animation and art style is the best thing about Hollow Knight. Yeah, Hollow Knight looks really good too. They're all pretty simple animations though. Like actually looking at it. Yeah, it is, but they're fluid and nice looking. Yeah, the game also took like a bazillion years to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if we're gonna argue animation and style, everything's gonna lose to Cuphead. So why would why yeah. do we even bother? Mm, yep. All right, Ricky, what you got number four? All right. Uh, my number four is a game that came out uh, like uh, two weeks ago. No, a week ago. <laughs> like nine days ago. They're really recent. Uh, it was Watam. Uh, so the How best do you spell way that? I've described Watam is uh, imagine Death Stranding, right? And <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd rather take not. The, take the message of Death Stranding that Kojima keeps saying. Uh, Death Stranding is apparently about connecting communities and togetherness and oh. bridging people together. I thought it was about... So take, you know, Death Stranding's 80-hour story, compress it into three, uh, make everything colorful, uh, make it fun, and then add some poop. <laughs> and then you have Watam. Oh, also add holding hands. And now you have Watam. Oh my goodness. I have a, a question. I it. Question. It's a game. It's by the people that made Katamari. Yeah. So you know, it's it's very much in that vein of game, in the in the feel good department. Uh, the soundtrack is incredible. Um, it's it's just a happy feel good game. It's very it gameplay is nothing like Katamari, but everything else is very Katamari, in terms of like. It's just a happy, feel-good game, and it's just fun to play and exist in. Because all you really do in the game is run around and do little random tasks and hold hands with other objects. That and sounds great. And, and I loved it. Question. Is there any monster energy? What? Does it have any monster energy in it? No. No? So that's why it's only number four on the list. <laughs> Also, Watam isn't on Steam because it's on Epic Game Store. Epic Game Store. Yeah. But it's only $20? It might only be $20. Because I, I know I paid $30 for it, but I also bought a physical copy for PS4 because I like the box art. But yeah. Um, buy Watam. It's $20 and it's really fun. Sweet. All right, cool. Death Stranding, but good, is what yeah, I'm getting from that. that Death Stranding, but fun. <laughs> we know nothing about it, so it sounds like we're in for a time. Oh, you guys will love it. It's it. 